Hey guys, what's up? It's Mike. Hey guys, it's Melina. And we're coming at you with a brief video today. We're going to talk about the different types of vapes you can purchase and buy as of 2021. So yeah, let's get it. So I'm just throwing it out there. There are five different types of electronic cigarettes for the most part overall on the market today. Um, first being Sigalikes. Um, the ones that look like a traditional tobacco cigarette. Obviously they're not, they're an electronic cigarette. Um, vape pens is another one, um, as well as vape mods, pod mods, and uh, all together going on to disposable vapes. Um, so let's jump right into it and um, go over each and every one of the types of vapes we're about to discuss. Let's get it. All right, guys, so for the first uh, type of vape that we're gonna discuss that's on the market today in 2021 is the Sigalike electronic cigarettes that typically look like a traditional tobacco cigarette, as I stated prior and earlier in this video. So Alina's gonna break it down and give you guys um, basically just a rundown of what a Sigalite is and um, the specs and the uh, details regarding the Sigalite. So let's jump right into it. Okay, so the East uh, East like cigarettes, um, they are pre-filled disposables and do not require a button for the device. Um, the uh, Sigalite. So uh, that being said, they come in numerous shapes, sizes, um, different types, and all that. And with that being said and done, um, Sigalites in general look like your t uh, traditional tobacco cigarette, and um, they do the trick. But they're not my uh, area of, you know, I don't go for those right off the bat. I go for some other types of setups that we're going to break down in a second. And I want to throw it out there. Some Sigalikes you can refill with e-liquid, while others come pre-installed with e-liquid internally of the, into the device. So you don't have to replace it. And once it's all vaped up and all the e-liquid's gone, you know, you toss it for the most part and get rid of that vaping and then go on to the next. Um, but some, um, you know, have the opportunity, have the ability, and have the consistency to be able to refill um, the, uh, you know. Okay, and they cannot be refilled or recharged, and they are similar to the disposable E6. Some Sigalikes can be recharged. Um, it's rare, but you can get some that can recharge. Um, because if they don't recharge, then it's pretty much classified as a disposable vape. But we're going to get into disposable vapes specifically in the next little while. Um, anything else you want to throw out there, babe, about um, cigarettes? No, this is it. Now Mike is going to break down vape pens for you guys. All right, so vape pens. Um, I don't have any. I don't use them typically. I haven't used them in years. But um, they look something to the extent of... Um, you know, it comes with a, like a cylinder battery. It comes with basically, so I have a vape pen right here. This one holds THC, but that's beside the point. Um, basically it's a battery. You can adjust on the bottom voltage, um, powered on by clicking it five times. And, uh, you take the top tank off. And uh, then you basically just can reinstall it by screwing it back onto the device, to the battery. And uh, from there, uh, that's pretty much it. Some of these come with carts that you uh, screw into the battery and the carts are not refillable like the tanks are. But just like the tanks, the carts also do have pre-filled e-liquid um, and the tanks do not. You have to, you know, pre-fill and, and fill to an extent your e-liquid in the tank in order to have that e-liquid there soak into the wicks and be able to vape on it. Um, so that being said, um, what else? So as Alina just said before off camera, these types of vapes are really good for novice vapors who want something small, simple, and easy to use. And they're generally not that expensive. So that's a plus in itself. Um, they do have limited functionality. Um, most devices 
Do not allow the user to adjust the airflow or the temperature, voltage, wattage, etc., etc., and all that good stuff. So cartridges are generally the same thing as tanks and pods, and they consist of a coil and a mouthpiece. Um, the difference, though, is that the coils can't be changed in the carts, whereas they can be changed in the tanks um, and the pods as well. They are ideal and very well tolerated for people and by people who have never used vapes. And the only disadvantage is that they don't have as much of a juice capacity um, for the unit as something like pods and tanks and so on and so forth. So basically vape pens are small and intuitive devices with more features than Sega likes, obviously, but fewer than pod and box mods. So yeah. You know, so the vape pens are affordable, cost generally between 20, 30, and maybe up to $40. And with the uh, ones that have refillable cartridges, they're more customizable than a disposable vape when all is said and done. Um, certain vape pens only have it set in stone for fixed voltage so you can't adjust the voltage i don't want to say wattage but you can't adjust either of those um whereas some um you have the ability to adjust the voltage um and increase the amount of vapor production or decrease the amount of vapor production being put out by the unit by your electronic cigarette um and it's a steady consistent vaping experience to be quite honest um, and they come with you know variable voltage um, and they allow the user to change the voltage all right so moving right along the next type of electronic cigarette or vape it's on the market today in 2021 and all that good stuff um, are the pod systems you know the um, let's see the pod mods if you will Another thing is these things are great for people who like vaping salt and nicotine liquids. <coughs> the vapor production for these uh, pod mods, fantastic. Right now I'm vaping on the Nord 4 electronic cigarette pod mod system. And um, as you can see, this is the pod. You preload it with e-liquid and then you it's magnetic so it clips right into your battery. You go from there, you can adjust wattage on the side, all that good stuff, and uh, and know what you're uh, vaping physically and specifically at the same time. They function at a slightly higher level than the vape pens and the Sega like devices um, when all is said and done. Um, and they produce a slightly more intense vaping experience, like so. They put out much more vapor production, as you can clearly see. No questions asked. Anyways, the closed pod systems um, are disposable pods that are pre-filled with nicotine e-liquid, or e-liquid in general, and once you're dry, and you run out of e-liquid in your pod, it's time to toss it and throw in a new pod, a fresh pod, and go from there. Anyways, an open system pod is basically a pod that can be refilled with e-liquid or e-juice. E um, the pods use, use you know, um, coils within the actual pod itself to produce the vapor and they last four to six refills before they need to be replaced and by replaced i mean the coils being replaced but there are pod mods out there that can handle and will handle free based nicotine e-liquids just throwing that out there while at the same time they generally cost less which is a plus I don't know if I said it already and I don't want to repeat myself, so forgive me, but I'm going to do it anyways. So that being said, um, these devices generally can be adjusted via wattage 
you can adjust the watts some have volt adjustments and voltage adjustments and all that good stuff um plus they have more features and functions than a vape pen or a sigalite -like, and some functions on the same level honestly to a box mod um which are very potent and uh extreme vaping equipment and uh devices switching it up for a second i'm going to be vaping on right now still a pod system as you can see pod pops into the battery and go from there i'm switching it up i'm going to use the smoke or smock rpm 160 160 watts total for this unit for this device this vape and um yeah Alina was helping me with the video, but now she's uh, chilling, getting ready for more videos to come, right, baby? <laughs> so she's uh, preparing herself for all the videos we got coming out for you guys in the near future. But back to the video, back to the topic. Um, one disadvantage, though, of the pod systems or the pod mods is they do not produce as much vapor as the box mod um, and don't have as many features or functions as the pod mods um, should have when compared to a box mod so it is what it is but honestly i have no complaints with the pod mods that are out on the market today they produce tremendous amount of vapor great flavor uh, profile and content i give them great ratings and great scores for the most part depending on the unit itself and what brand it is generally speaking you can't go wrong with a pod mod system setup All right, all right, so next we're gonna get into vape mods and touch base on them briefly. Arguably, they're the best devices to buy because of these advantages. And in addition, because of their size, they have more battery power than other types of vapes and uh, common types of the box mod and tube mod. Um, you know, carry out exactly what I just mentioned many of these mods or box mods or whatever you want to call them when all is said and done they're generally highly sophisticated customizable and uh, powerful and potent devices at the end of the day so when you release the vapor and blow it out of your mouth you're gonna notice profound and potent clouds just expanding everywhere and then they slowly dissipate into a mist and then they're gone, ultimately. Um, yeah. Many people and a lot of people like vaping them because they come with tanks and rebuildable atomizers that use low resistance coils, low ohm coils. With the low resistance, it, it can run hotter, allowing them to create thicker and more dense and uh, just bigger clouds of vapor in the atmosphere, in the air, when you blow it out of your mouth. And, um, yeah. So users basically, um, although there are a few or several different types of box mods to an extent, to a degree, one I'm focusing on specifically, and specifically only right now, are the mechanical mods and these are simple devices that use steady voltage output from the battery to vaporize the juice in the tank. And oh yeah, in addition, the tanks used for these devices enable the user to change the airflow settings and the coils, while the mods themselves have settings like variable wattage, some have variable voltage, memory mode, and much, much more when all is said and done. And with all that being said and done, it brings me to my last type of vape on the market today in 2021. I used to vape disposable vapes, which is the topic and the um, overall aspect of what we're about to discuss about disposable vapes. I used to vape them frequently and I uh, was spending a lot of money on them. At first, I didn't think it was that much money. I thought it was a better deal and a better bang for my buck. But no, they just kept adding up, you know, and... Um, OCD, I just didn't want to throw throw them out. I wanted to keep them in a bag in case I ever needed one in an emergency situation. Maybe I could get a couple puffs out of them. 
but uh, ultimately they just sat around in my room for a long time before I got rid of them. But the disposable vapes, basically, being disposable, you know, quote unquote, go figure, pretty obvious. These disposable vapes are non-rechargeable vaping devices. They come pre-charged and pre-filled with the liquid in the device, in the unit itself, in the vape itself. Um, they have various flavors and options, a lot of different brands. I won't go into detail. And I actually think I have a disposable vape right here in the box. The Hype Max Banana Ice. If I can get into it, I'm just literally ripping it apart. So yeah, you cannot charge these once they're done, once the battery runs out, once the e-liquid in the cotton or the coils in the unit, in the device, the vape runs out and dries up. You gotta toss them and get another one. So this flavor is the Banana Ice by Hype Max Disposable Vapes. Let's see. Well, it's a very potent menthol flavor. Hints of banana. Not too shabby, not too bad. Put that aside though for a second, get back to the point of the video. It also gives them a satisfying nicotine hit, like I just said. Um, basically to mimic and give a mirror image of what a smoking experience is using a traditional tobacco cigarette and all that good stuff. I won't go into detail about, um, you know, which flavors I like the most or um, the different brands of these disposable vapes. But what I can say is they're created to maximize convenience and these vaping devices are usually high strength salt nicotine, which gives them that extra throat hit. Anyways, y'all, I lied. Rather than the five types of vapes on the market today in 2021, um, one more device I wanna throw out there is a mechanical mod. And the mechanical mods are simple yet advanced at the same time for a vaping device. They deliver raw battery power to an atomizer um, without electronic regulations and restrictions if you will can build their own coils and then drip nicotine liquid onto them through the drip tip um, they are unregulated being mechanical mods so the user needs to have a high amount of knowledge and uh, background in order to be vaping on them and to use them um, when all is said and done Um, the batteries are generally housed in a metal tube form type deal for the device. And, um, though mechanical box mods also are common, um, it's just not everybody uses them because of the fact that they, uh, can be kind of intricate and you got to get used to them. So there's no on or off switch. For this device the mechanical mods for the most part just the button um, and there are also no safety features so as soon as you press that button a current of electricity will be created which results in massive amounts of vapor flavor the whole nine yards they generally will have a button either on the bottom or on the side of the vape and the button is used to make the battery create a current that powers up the device so that you can vape and vape hard and chuck clouds go cloud chasing and uh, produce massive amounts of vapor when all is said and done. Anyways, these mechanical mods, just to touch base on it again briefly before I conclude this video, um, they have a metal body where the battery goes in and all that. And on top of that is a rebuildable dripping atomizer, also known as an RDA and a mouthpiece. I feel comfortable saying that in this video, throughout the video that I just, you know, made and that you guys are watching right now, pretty confident that I touched base on all the areas and aspects of all the devices out there on the market today. So in the beginning, I said there were five different types of electronic cigarettes on the market today in 2021, when in reality, there's up to six. 
and uh, don't quote me on the numbers, um, but I, you know, between, I'm gonna say between like four or five, upwards of six different types of vapes you can get on the market today in 2021. So yeah, there you have it. <clears throat> yeah, I'm pretty much hopeful, and uh, you know, now I could go on and on about the differences between unregulated mech mods and regular regulated mech mods, but I'm going to hold off on doing so. I just wanted to touch base briefly on what mechanical mods are and their functions and so on and so forth. So yeah, that being said, that's pretty much it. So I said five different types of electronic cigarettes out there on the market today in 2021. Really, there are about six. Um... If I'm forgetting any, drop a comment down below. Let me know if I am. If not, hey, pretty hope, pretty hopeful that I, uh, I nailed it tonight and uh, in this video. So, uh, yeah, the hope is there. The reality is, it's all preference, and uh, basically, Excuse me. Anyways, with all that being said and done, just want to throw one more thing out there. Just one thing out there real quick, and that is that because of the fact there's so many different types of electronic cigarettes and vapes out on the market today in 2021, it's a no-brainer that the price range, depending on which vape and which type of setup and style you get, could cost less, some could cost more, back and forth, in between the whole nine yards. So um, it's all preference, like I said again. It also goes into your financial situation, what you can afford. Um, but ultimately, you should be able to find an electronic cigarette that fits you, works for you, and uh, does the trick for you when all is said and done. All right, anyways, guys, this concludes this video. If you like this video, drop a like down below. Drop a comment down below. Let me know if you got something out of this video. Any other feedback too is appreciated. And uh, that being said, smash that subscribe button for more content in the near future. So go ahead, subscribe. I'll wait. Hey, good looks. Thanks, man. Thanks, guys. Anyways, until next time, you already know. Cheers and ciao. Peace.